The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. First reading is from Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. A reading from Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it up. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twig. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce bows of bear and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the fields shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Jesus. Second reading is from Second Corinthians chapters five through chapter five verses six through ten and fourteen through seventeen. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God. And I hope that we are also well known to consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in the right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on. Because we are convinced that one has died for all, Therefore all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. According to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? 
Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. If you have never heard of Pastor Nadia Boltz Weber, I encourage you when you get home today to look her up and read some of her books. She is a pastor in the ELCA, the founder of a congregation called House for All Sinners and Saints, and has become a well-known figure in the ELCA. And she would also be the first to tell you that she is the most unlikely person to become any of these things. In 2012, Nadia was invited to be a main stage speaker for 35,000 high school students at the ELCA Youth Gathering in New Orleans. And in Nadia's book, Accidental Saints, she compared this invitation to the youth gathering to her own personal Nineveh, that she was like Jonah, asked to go and preach to the people of Nineveh, Nineveh but she would rather get swallowed by a whale than go there. <laughs> For one thing, she had no idea how to talk to teenagers. That was not her usual audience. But there was also the fact that this was a controversial invitation at the time. And there was a pretty large number of people who did not want her setting foot on that stage because of her past. But the planners of the youth gathering wanted the kids in that Superdome to see what Lutheran can look like and to hear an abundance of grace in the process. And so Nadia got up on that stage, and at one point she told the entire Superdome full of thousands of ELCA high schoolers, some of your parents and pastors were really upset that I was your speaker tonight. They thought someone with my past shouldn't be allowed to talk to thousands of teenagers. And you know what I have to say about that? They're absolutely right. Somebody with my past of alcoholism and drug abuse and promiscuity and lying and stealing should not be allowed to talk to you. But you know what? Somebody with my present, who I am now, shouldn't be allowed to talk to you either. <laughs> I'm a sarcastic, heavily tattooed, angry person who swears like a truck driver. I am a flawed person who really should not be allowed to talk to you. But you know what? That's the kind of God we are dealing with, people. <laughs> and there was an uproar <laughs> from the stadium. In our gospel today, we hear the parable of the mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, that when sown upon the ground becomes the greatest of all shrubs. I love that line. It is hilarious. The greatest of all shrubs, of all things. The kingdom of God is like a weed. It is an invasive and fast-spreading, wily plant that is unfurling in all of the most unlikely places. And not only that, it is being sown, purposely planted in the ground. No gardener in their right mind would put a mustard plant in the middle of their garden. It would completely overtake it. And not only that, it will grow so large 
that birds will sit in the shade it provides. They will flock to it. What gardener wants that amount of birds in their garden? Looking at all of you, the gardeners in the crowd. And here Jesus is, not pulling up weeds, not putting out scarecrows, but inviting the mess, scattering the kingdom of God out in all directions for it to take over and consume all of the fields of the earth, growing in all the unlikeliest of places and people. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> and yet, this is our God. This is the kind of God we're dealing with, people. This is the grace that we are dealing with. And when Nadia was on her flight to New Orleans to speak at that youth gathering, she ended up being seated next to a teenager with pink hair who was drawing anime characters in her notebook. And they sparked up a cautious and curious conversation. And the girl asked about Nadia's tattoos, and so she was telling her the stories of her tattoos. Nadia silently made note to herself of the self-harm scars on the girl's arms. And she asked about what she was drawing in her notebook. Eventually, Nadia asked if she was on her way to the Lutheran Youth Gathering, and the girl said, no way, how'd you know? <laughs> and Nadia said, turns out I'm a pastor, and I'm doing a thing there tomorrow night. She was the main stage speaker on the first night. That was the thing she was doing. And in this conversation, Nadia learned that this girl had an incredibly complicated and troubled home life that she felt like she didn't fit in or belong with her peers or with her youth group at church. And Nadia shared some of her own story about not fitting in and not belonging, but eventually finding belonging. And at the end of their flight, this girl gave Nadia the biggest hug <laughs> and the drawing that she had been working on, which turned out to be of Nadia. And at the Superdome the next night, as she spoke to thousands of teachers, she was, to teenagers, excuse me, she was really speaking to just this one girl with the pink hair and the scars on her arms. The girl who felt like she didn't belong. And to this girl, one amongst thousands in that stadium, Nadia said, this is a God who has always used imperfect people. This is a God who walked among us and who ate with all the wrong people and kissed lepers. This is a God who rose from the dead and grilled fish on the beach with his friends and then ascended to heaven and is especially present to us in the most offensively ordinary things. Wheat, water, wine, words. This God has never made sense. And you don't need to either. Because this God will use you, all of you, not just your strengths, but your flaws and your failings. Your weakness is fertile ground for God to make something new, something beautiful. So don't ever think that all you have to offer are your gifts. That's what it looks like to be a Lutheran. <laughs> this is the kind of God we are dealing with, people. The God that scatters seed and sets the Holy Spirit loose <laughs> to be at work in the places and people that we least expect. Entering into all of the parts of us that the world has told us to hide or to cut down and growing the world's largest shrubbery there. <laughs> Inviting all of the misfits, the downtrodden, the disheartened to find a place of respite in its shade. This is a God who is up to something unexpected and unexplainable here. 
The kingdom of God is entering in, growing like a weed, ushering in a new kind of welcome and belonging. One with space for all of our stories, all of our imperfections, all of our flaws. This, this is the God we are dealing with. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day, Build Us Up. Before we get started, um, we're dedicating this song to Dave Berg, our father in heaven, and he brought this song back for us uh, from Arizona. It's been years ago, but uh, we sang it our first time here, and then we also sang it for a father-son banquet downstairs. And at that father-son banquet downstairs, a special person who's singing with us today retired pastor, Roger Howe, <laughs> asked me, would you let me sing with your men's choir the next time you sing this song? So here he is, and we're gonna put that up for you right now. <laughs> Thank you. 
our gifts for the good of the world. <laughs> bread of life. You have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
body of Christ giving for you. The body of Christ giving for you. Christ giving for you.
Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. We have very few announcements, announcements this morning. We continue with our summer worship. We have a few more flat Jesuses available if you would like to take Jesus with you on your summer adventures. They are on the table at the top of the stairs. I think we have three left, but I can make more. So if you would like a flat Jesus to take with you, just let me know. Or take one of the ones that are there. But if they're gone, I can make more. Just let me know. <laughs> are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Yeah, the garden in front of our church is going to get a makeover. <laughs> if anyone would like some of the stage, there's yeah. uh, Carl Forster, and there's also what I call the Dish Lilies, but the Day Lilies are there. Yes. You're welcome to dig them. I think we'll do it Monday if weather if, if weather cooperates, they're going to dig them up tomorrow. So if you would like to take plants for your own garden, you are welcome. Talk to Cheryl, and she'll tell you what's there. All right. We have a tradition of doing milestones on Sunday mornings, which are the big, small, in-between things that we want to celebrate in community. And so you are invited to raise your hand and shout out a milestone. And I will repeat it back so everyone can hear. And at the end, I'll say milestone. And we will all offer up a big, single clap together. And I see we are so ready for a milestone. What's your milestone? You turned three a <laughs> uh, milestone. <laughs> Any other milestones to share today? I would like to just publicly thank my two beautiful daughters for bringing four of our nine grandchildren to <laughs> sing today. For family here to worship with us today, a milestone. I also have family here today, my parents, Dave and Beth are worshiping with us this morning here for Father's Day. So a milestone for visitors. A milestone for the beautiful music shared with us today. A milestone. A milestone for all the fathers and fathers-to-be and father-wannabes in the world. Yes. <laughs> a milestone for all who are celebrating Father's Day. other milestones to share today. All right, I have a blessing to offer for Father's Day. Before we conclude our worship here. Let us pray together. Abba God, our Father in heaven, we give you thanks for those who have been models of your unfailing love. Today we especially lift up fathers, father figures, and mentors who have been a loving and supportive presence in our lives. We thank you for stepfathers and adoptive father fathers who follow in the way of Joseph, the father of Jesus. We thank you for grandfathers and older role models who, like Simeon, lift up and celebrate the redeeming presence of God. We thank you for brothers in faith in all generations, from Peter and Paul down to the present day. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of a father or a father figure, or whose relationships with fathers are strained or broken. Surround them with your love and the peace which passes all understanding. We pray in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we receive God's blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us feeds us and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
We sing together our sending song number 547, sent forth by God's blessing.